Joining us, former captain of the West Indies women's team and current member of the history-making West Indies women's World T20 Championship winning side, Marissa Aguilera. Um, welcome to The Zone. Great to have you in the, in the studio. Should I say I'm happy to be here after you all get me out of my vacation? So you're on vacation <laughs> in Jamaica? <laughs> yes, I am. We like, we like the fact that Caribbean people have vacations in the Caribbean. So it's I, good to have you here. Yeah. Um, in the studio, because we, we talk to you all the time oh, on the yeah. phone or Skype or something with many miles across the waters between us. Yes, yes, yes. Now you're between us. <laughs> and um, we... we <laughs> you know, the thing about it, people, is he never buys a drink for the, for the corny jokes. <laughs> All right, so, you know me, I'm an inquisitive man. I wanted to know, and I'll put it into context for you. Okay. Um, Australia battling against the West Indies for years, led by Alan Border could not beat the West Indies. As soon as Mark Taylor came in <laughs> as captain, he won a series <laughs> against West Indies. Did you feel a little queasy that after trying so hard as captain to win, you see another captain leading the winning side? I felt no how. I was just happy and pleased to know that we actually, you know, passed that mantle. We, we have been going on for years, as you say, and you know, we just didn't get it together. And you know, Stephanie came and uh, we just had so much going for us at that point in time. And uh, the team, we just believed in each other, which I think was a big difference. Mm. And um, we understand our roles and responsibilities and we just go there and we just delivered. Did the under 19 success at the World Cup inspire you? Of course it did. I mean, we said they are the younger generation and obviously, you know, they led from the front, you know, they started off something which, you know, we just follow up on and even the, the guys, they were talking about it as well. Yes. So, you know, it was just a big success for West Indies cricket. Mm. You know, we, we, we've studied the progress of the team throughout the championship and, and you played well throughout, apart from that glitch against England. But tell me about that victory over New Zealand, because a lot of the experts who were watching the games closely felt that this New Zealand team was probably stronger than the Australian team. So it led me to believe that if you were, if you were able to beat New Zealand so impressively, it gave us the confidence that you would have been able to beat Australia. Was that how the team assessed that New Zealand semi-final win? Well, from ever since we mentioned that um, New Zealand was a team that we wanted to play in the, in the semi-finals. Even though, yes, they were on top of things, but they were due for a bad match. And I think, you know, that is exactly what happened. And we believe that we could have beaten New Zealand. So we went out there. And I think that when we lost against England, it was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> that was my thinking. And I went out and I was like, ladies, we have no reason to be upset. We have no reason to be crying and disappointed. You because you were beaten up until that point. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I felt the same way about the men losing to Afghanistan. Um, right. That you want New Zealand were unbeaten too, yeah. so you know that, that the odds suggest there's a beating somewhere. Better it come <laughs> at that stage than the, the crucial stage. Yeah. I also looked, I felt you were going to beat Australia because of the way, watching the West Indies throughout the competition, you had six hitters, much in the same way as we knew the men had power hitters. Yeah. You had power hitters, and looking at the other teams, they didn't seem to have the ability to hit the sixes and fours to push the score along. But I didn't think you'd chase down 149. Seriously? I thought that was a big <laughs> score. Well, to be honest, I didn't think so. Because when we came off the field, I told the team that Australia is about 10, 15 runs short. Oh, really? Yes, because I know that Stephanie Taylor, our skipper, and Haley Matthews, they love the ball coming onto their bats. So that score wasn't, I, I truly I'm believe sorry, that they sorry, were, sorry, yeah, 10, note. 15, 15 runs short. Wasn't that sort of like the highest score in a final? Yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. So we made history with that as well, so. Yeah. You know, the team grew a lot under your leadership. It was during the period that you were captain that mm -hmm. the West Indies women's team really started to hit the, the curve and, and, and going, going forward. Um, how did you feel about the growth of the game under your captaincy? Because when you started out in 2008, it, we were sort of rebuilding and so on. Take us through the, the phase of the West Indies women's team under your leadership. Well, I think um, 
as you say, it was a development process. Um, it was really hard at times because, you know, most of the time you're mostly hearing, like, you know, Stephanie Taylor, the Andrew Lottins, coin runs, and you mostly hear people mentioning that the West Indies team have two players. Mm. And we grew to understand as players that we have to pick up our responsibilities. And that's going to take time. Eventually, you had players going in the nets, batting for long periods of time, you know, understanding their roles and responsibilities on the team itself. And knowing that we have a small pool of players and the West Indies really depend on us, we had to really get ourselves together and understand, you know, Stephanie and DeAndre can't always carry on this burden. We have to have other players who have to step up and really get it on for the for the team itself and that is exactly what we have been doing you know we have even been having our personal trainers trainers coaches and so on outside yeah. of the outside, regular team preparation yeah. because i can speak for myself in lines of like david williams yes. you know he had a lot of um he helped me through the the my my entire career most yeah. of it a former West Indies and TNT yes. wicketkeeper yeah. and I even had Santoki Krishma Santoki giving me you know some little information as well so you know it had people you know that are really helping you throughout it and I think you know that is exactly what you need because not all the time you know you meet up with the coaches and they will have enough mm -hmm. time to spend Goodness. with you yes, yes. so that's why you have to take it upon yourself to do some personal training and that is exactly what some of the players did they went and they did their personal training look at Brittany Cooper yes. you know she she had an excellent knock in the semi-finals mm. and she did exactly that as well so you find most of the players going out there and getting their training I done I wish most going of the side. men would, going the extra would do that yeah so you know mm. I think that is exactly what happened throughout and we, we came to and it's, it's precisely that why I was a lot more confident about your team um, in this T20 World Cup because in almost in each match it was a different player putting their hand up exactly. yes. and then it was what Haley in the in, the, in, the, the, final, in the final, final. Exactly. and as you mentioned Brittany in the semi and so on and right the way through so either with ball or bat somebody uh, different was putting their hand up to say I'm going to, to perform on this day and exactly. they did. We take a break we're back uh, with much more in just a minute.